It's competition week. And you can see that familiar pattern of behavior in your athlete and the rising cycle of anxiety starting like clockwork as competition time creeps closer. The little changes to behavior, mood swings and that look of worry and even fear in the eyes and on the face of the children we care about. As the week wears on, the frustration turns to emotional meltdowns. Even the consistent elements begin to become a problem. And that performance anxiety, cycle of doubt, frustration, and fear begins once again. You want to help. You want to fix it. But what do you say to help your young athlete have confidence and joy when they compete? What do you say? What do you do so that they'll be successful? Welcome to the Anti-Fragile Mindset where athletes and their support team come to learn the strategies champions use to achieve excellence. I'm your host, Christine Reese belesne and I'm a high-performance mindset coach, former professional athlete, figure skating coach, and a proud parent of an elite athlete. Each week, I'm sharing my top tips on how I develop an unstoppable mindset in our up-and-coming young athletes and champions, so you can accomplish all your dreams, whether you're an athlete or a high-performing business professional. Get ready for a jam-packed episode focused on practical tips to help you get after your goals. Step out of your comfort zone, realize your dreams, and develop maximum enjoyment no matter what you do. So join me each week as we tackle important mindset issues and listen to insightful interviews to help you develop the anti-fragile mindset. So let's get to it. When in doubt, less is more. And a simple hug and I love you goes a long way. The week before competition is a stressful time for athletes, coaches, and parents alike. Athletes put themselves, their abilities, and their whole identity out there to be judged and must accept that those efforts don't always pay off in sports. We parents want the best for our children or our students. And it's painful to see our kids And students, if you're a coach, fail to find the success that we and they want so much. Because of this impact on them and us, we as parents want to do everything we can to help them both before and after they compete. And this is where parents have a tremendous capacity to engage in what we call magical thinking. Let me explain. As the parents of our children, we believe we have a lot of influence over them. And to a great extent, we do. Having been the most important influences in their lives and in how they grow as people. And this belief in that power to impact our children can filter into how they do on a competition day. Parents so want to believe that if they just say the right thing, their kids will magically perform incredibly well. Wanting to leverage that influence, a common question I'm asked by parents is, what can I say to my child that will help them be successful? As parents, for the most part, we hope that and believe in an illusion that we have this magical influence. But sadly, that influence can often do more damage to our kids' efforts. Research shows that all too often, that nothing we say to our kids will make them perform any better. Not the, you can do it, or we believe in you, or have fun, try your hardest, or even go for it. If you have tried any of these, then you know that we can't psych them up, remind them of what they should work on, or somehow increase their motivation, confidence, intensity, or focus. They will perform as well as they are capable on that day, regardless of all the motivational words of wisdom or all the inspirational speeches we or their coaches give them. But unfortunately, as parents and even as coaches, we do have the ability with the words we use to ensure they don't perform well. Our words can create pressure, make them nervous, shift their focus to results, Cause them to think about you, cause them to think about their competitors, reduce their motivation and confidence, and make them afraid to do what they have trained themselves to do. 
those helpful, you can win, use good technique, we will be cheering for you, or go out there and beat Anita or Jason, are all pretty much the kiss of death for your kids on competition day. Here are a couple suggestions for pre-competition. Before they start to warm up, give them a hug and say, I love you. Then if at all possible, give them space till after the competition. And if they see you before they compete, resist the urge to say something and simply smile and give them a big thumbs up or blow a kiss. As a parent, I made all the same mistakes as my son competed in his sport. And I wished I had known what I know now. It certainly would have helped me navigate the rough waters of the sport anxiety that my son struggled with. But information is a wonderful thing. And whether it be for my son now or all my young clients or for yours that struggle with performance nerves, I am dedicated to help not only my clients, but assist other parents to avoid making the mistakes I made. Another question I'm also frequently asked is, what do I say to my child after they compete? It's a great question. My first piece of advice would be, whether they had a good competition or bad, don't rush right up to them and try and solve the situation. An important part of kids' growth and learning to deal with both success and failure in sports and life is to allow them the valuable time to sit with their performance and to experience whatever emotions they may be feeling. Whether those are frustration, embarrassment, disappointment, elation, or joy. To figure out for themselves what they think of their efforts. If they performed well, you want them to be able to enjoy that moment of their success and allow those good feelings to sink in deep. And if they had a disappointing performance, trust me, I know the first urge is to rush up to them and protect them from the pain of failure by comforting, soothing, and, or even making excuses for them. That is actually the worst thing we can do as parents, or even as coaches, that we can do. One of the great emotional lessons your young athletes can learn is how to deal with the inevitable ups and downs that will occur in their sport and academic lives. And those lessons require that they are allowed to feel bad, frustrated, sad, or even embarrassed. So whether it is a success or failure, it's important to give your young athletes some space to fully experience their performance before rushing in and to give them congratulations or comfort. Once you give them that space, ideally, you want them to come to you rather than you rushing over to them. When you do connect, what do you say? If they had a great performance, the common expressions I've heard include, You won. Oh, you were so good. You were a star out there. Suffice to say, none of these comments are very helpful to your children. If they had a performance that you know is going to be a disappointment to them, avoid trying to make them feel better. It won't work. Comments such as, you'll get them next game. I thought you played really well. Or, it doesn't matter. From what my young clients over the years have shared with me, These comments rarely are helpful. As much as we would like to, we just can't make our young athletes' disappointment go away. And to be able to raise resilient young people, we don't want it to just go away. If those unpleasant feelings just disappear, your children will miss out on an essential opportunity to experience their emotions and to gain that resilience and emotional mastery. If they had a good performance that you know was good, try not to feel compelled to tell them how good it was. They know when they've performed well. So there's really no reason for compliments such as, you were awesome, or good job, or way to go. Their actual success is all they need to validate their efforts, build their confidence, and get or keep them excited about sports participation. Plus, in their eyes, unless you've played or coached their sport at a high level, your comments have about as much credibility as, well, someone who doesn't know anything about their sport. I'm really sorry to tell you that. 
Here are two suggestions for what to say and do after a competition, whether a success or failure. First, just like before, give them a hug and tell them I love you. If they're really sad after a disappointing game, don't say anything more unless they come to you and ask for your thoughts and even then allow some time before diving into what they could have done better. So as we think of that influence that we think we have to make our kids feel magically better, but don't really have, that magical hug and I love you will go a long way in helping them deal with their sadness. And for most kids, their biggest fear is that their poor performance will mean that their parents will be disappointed in them or their coaches will be disappointed in them or even that they, their parents may not love them as much as before. And I know for us it sounds implausible, but it is a very real fear that interferes with more performances than not. Yes, they will feel sad. Yes, they may even be devastated which is hard for any parent and even a coach to witness. But they will also feel supported because you're there and they know that you still love them. Second, and this is advice from Wayne Bryan, the father of multiple Grand Slam tennis doubles champions. His advice and what he did after every match with his two boys was to simply say, where do you want to eat? The message you send your young athletes is that you're at the game. You obviously care about their sport. And at the same time, you're also sending them a message that how they perform doesn't change their relationship with you, nor will their life drastically change in any way. And especially after a disappointing loss, Mr. Bryan said that he just wanted his boys to get the message that that they'll be okay and that life goes on. And I can't think of a better message to send to our young athletes after they put so much of themselves into whatever sport that they have chosen to pursue. And sometimes we as parents have to remember exactly why we put them into sport and its real purpose in our children's lives. So I want to say thank you for joining me on another episode of the Anti-Fragile Mindset. And if you found this information useful, Whether you agree or disagree, I would love to hear your comments. And please, share with a friend. I hope that you were able to take away from today's episode something that will help you find the right words to say. Or better yet, resist the temptation to say too much. If you'd like to learn more about how to develop unshakable confidence and emotional mastery, and how you can put these skills into action and become the anti-fragile athlete, contact me at christine at anti-fragileathlete.net. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this episode to help us rise up on the searches so more athletes and high performers can benefit from this information. Follow me on Twitter at FitSkate and on Instagram at SkatingMindGym. Listen in every Tuesday for tips and tools to help you develop anti-fragile confidence and the mindset of a champion. And don't forget to check out our new website and online learning center at www.anniefragilemindset.net. Tune into my next week's episode as I share my best tips for post-competition do's and don'ts. And remember, breathe and get your mental toughness reps in.